Now that you're familiar with the different fields and values inside the editor, let's talk about custom values. Most fields let you pass app information from a previous step in your Zap, but some may be more restrictive and appear as static dropdowns. You can only pick from the options available. By default, these options are static. You pick a value and it stays the same every time the Zap runs. It never changes. But if you want more flexibility, that's where the Custom tab comes in. Take the Trello Create Card action. In it, you can define what color label you want to apply to a card every time your Zap runs. Let's say you want your Zap to create a different colored label each time it runs. At first, it looks like you can't do that, until you click onto the Custom tab. By selecting that option, you'll see all the information from the previous steps of your Zap. Here, you can use information from a previous step to select the color label we want. Just like dynamic values, which we explained in the last lesson, custom values will change every time your Zap runs because it depends on data your apps receive. Essentially, custom values can turn a static option into a dynamic one. There's one major thing to keep in mind when using custom values. Some app APIs don't display information in a way that humans can read. For example, if a user is tagged in a Trello card, it might be known as a string of numbers and letters in Trello's API. You can tell when this occurs in Zapier's editor, though. You may see gray numbers or text underneath the list of options you can select. In this case, the Action app can only understand the information in light gray, instead of the options humans can read. If your Action app wants the weird mess of text and numbers, the Zap won't work properly if you don't give it what it wants. Things can get tricky if one app doesn't understand the information coming in from another app. It needs a translator. When that happens, Custom values will often be paired up with Formatter's lookup table, but we'll get to that a little bit later. For now, if you're creating a Zap and you think your options are limited, click around in the editor. You may find possibilities in the next tab over with custom values. We'll see you in the next lesson. We hope you enjoyed the video and learned something too. If you did, go ahead and like the video and consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this.